Hey guys, it's been a while. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about some of my favorite music documentaries. These documentaries really influenced me when I was first getting into music. I'm not gonna rank them in any certain order, but I encourage you to watch the whole video because I'm gonna point out some of my favorite moments from each one of these. I'm gonna have like a highlight of what I think the best part of each one of these documentaries is. Before I get into the list, I would love it if you commented your favorite music documentaries to see what you guys think are the best because there's some documentaries that I haven't seen that I would love to get your recommendation on what to watch next. Let's get started. So my first choice is Foo Fighters Back and Forth. This uh, documentary catalogs the, the whole history of Foo Fighters up to like 2011 or something like that. Yeah, 2011, that's when uh, the album Wasting Light came out. And this uh, DVD pretty much starts uh, with the telling of like how Nirvana came about and how Dave Grohl was in Nirvana. And then there's the death of Kurt Cobain and stuff as we all know. And then we learn about how he started up Foo Fighters and kept going on with the legacy. But I think the best part about this documentary is about the last quarter of the movie or so. They actually show the footage of them recording Wasting Light, which is actually my favorite album by them. I remember watching this on VH1 Classic when it came out. It really blew me away when I seen it the first time. My second choice kind of goes with the Foo Fighters too, but not really. It's Sound City. Uh, there's a glare there. Sound City is the telling of the famous recording studio Sound City in uh, Los Angeles. There's so many albums that were recorded there that I'm just gonna put them on the screen here right now. This documentary goes over the analog recording process. Most musicians these days are used to recording in digital formats like Pro Tools or Logic, but this shows how they used to record on tape on the Neve console. The documentary is kind of sad because it explains how Sound City went out of business, but that actually brings up the best part of the movie in my opinion is when they take the Neve console and they bring it into Dave Grohl's studio and then they record a new album with all the people who had recorded on that console before. You have musicians like Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails, Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters, Corey Taylor from Slipknot, uh, the guys from Rage Against the Machine. There, there's a lot of bands and then they record a whole new album on it. In my opinion, that's really exciting because it's kind of cool to watch people record on tape instead of just uh, looping the same segment over and over throughout your song. And, actually have to put the work in to make a good performance all the way throughout the song. My senior quote from my like, high school yearbook actually comes from the movie Sound City. Let me go grab that thing right now. Okay, I found it. This is a wild cover, by the way. So around the beginning of the movie, Dave Grohl says, when you're young, you're not afraid of what comes next. You're excited by it. So I put that in my yearbook because I thought it was a good quote. And then there's all these future plans of uh, what I wanted to do in the future, which has changed a little, but I actually did do all these things. I went to Baker College and got my associate's degree in IT. I then went and got my audio technology degree from NMC, which was how I learned how to mix and record professionally. And then I kind of gave up the dream of being a music producer because I actually want to record my own music. But that was the tangent. Let's get back to the documentaries. My third documentary of choice is Rush Beyond the Lighted Stage another glare. But this movie shows the history of Rush as we've never seen it before. We've seen a little bit of things on like the 30th anniversary Blu-ray of their behind the scenes, but this goes really in depth and shows their whole history. It has a bunch of other musicians on the movie who uh, praise Rush and say how big of an influence they were. There's not too much to say, but it's really cool to learn all about the band and the band's really funny. And that actually brings me to one of my standout moments in this movie. It's actually a bonus feature. They have this dinner at this like fancy restaurant it's just a bunch of joking around. It's not even about music, but it's some pretty funny stuff. My fourth documentary of choice is Metallica, Some Kind of Monster. This uh, DVD shows the behind the making of St. Anger, which as many people know, isn't one of their best albums, but the story behind the album of how the band broke up and everything, which they get on camera when James Hetfield leaves the band, is just pretty exciting. And some standout moments on this, I would say uh, there's a pretty cool part where uh, they actually interview Dave Mustaine about how he feels when Metallica uh, kicked him out of the band back in the Kill 'Em All days around that area. So it's really cool to see them, them finally uh, reconcile that relationship and kind of get on better terms. My last pick for today isn't actually uh, one movie, it's four of these here, and it's not these four in particular actually, it's the whole TV show. Um, there's a TV show called Classic Albums. That show shows the behind the making of all these classic albums. Like, I don't own all of them, but some of them I own is like U2, Joshua Tree, Rush 2112 and Moving Pictures, Nirvana's Nevermind, and Metallica's Black Album. These really go in depth and show you all the cool production techniques. Uh, some people who aren't into like that kind of stuff might not be interested, but anyone who's interested 
interesting to see how people record things. This is a really cool movie. One final piece of news is in mid-October, I don't know the exact date yet, I'm gonna have a single out. I have a guest singer recording on it. I showed some of it in my YouTube shorts, which I don't know if many people watch those, but um, you can kind of keep track of that new song and how the songwriting process is going in YouTube shorts. But I'll also make a longer video when it's ready to release and put the music video out here on YouTube and Spotify links and all that kind of stuff. Anyways, have a great day, guys.